doctor told me, I'm not the father of the child. My wife is carrying. Have a seat, Mr. Bradley. Dr. Robertson gestured at the chair in front of his desk. He waited for me to sit down before continuing. I have the results of the amniocentesis you requested concerning the paternity of the child your wife is carrying. He placed his hand on a manila folder that was lying on his desk. Before I show it to you, I'd like to ask you a few questions if you don't mind. What about? I asked, suddenly feeling defensive. I've done thousands of these tests, he tapped the folder with his fingers, and usually I can guess what the results are going to be based on the conversations I've had with the parents. I waited quietly for him to get to his point. That wasn't the case here. He once again tapped the folder. My question to you is, what made you think the child wasn't yours? This is going to sound crazy, I replied, but I swear it's the truth. I raised my hand like I was taking an oath. It's because of a dream my wife had. Hearing the words come out of my mouth made them sound even crazier than I imagined. What kind of dream? Dr. Robertson asked. I guess it's more of a recurring nightmare, really, I said. Tell me about it, he prompted. It started about a week or so before Mia found out she was pregnant, I explained. She'd wake up in the middle of the night screaming and clutching her stomach. When I asked her what was wrong, all she said to me was that they did something to my baby. I asked her who they were, but she couldn't describe them to me. How long did the dreams last? Dr. Robertson asked. Every night until she took the pregnancy test, I answered. So, about seven or eight days, maybe nine. Did she seek any kind of treatment for these dreams? She went to a psychologist who told her that the dreams were just a manifestation of her fears about becoming a mother. How long were you trying to conceive before your wife became pregnant? Six months at least, I said. Before he could ask another question, I cut him off and asked one of my own. What does all of this have to do with the results? I gestured at the folder that was still under his hand. I'm just trying to make sense of everything, he replied. He pushed the folder across the desk to me and opened it so I could read the report. See for yourself, he gestured at the single sheet of paper inside. I knew it, I hissed. When I saw the results that said I wasn't a genetic match to the child, I'm not the father. That's not the part that has me concerned, Dr. Robertson said. This is. He tapped a line near the bottom of the sheet that said my wife wasn't the biological mother of the child. 